All right, it's recording. Wonderful. So, Mike, are you here? Oh, that's I'm here. Dan? Here. Here. Dan is here. Re? Here. Naomi? Here. Stephanie? Here. Present online. Alan? Present. Chad? Here. Gabe. Here. James. Present. James is online. Alex. Alex said he was going to be here. Um, Taylor here. And Paul. I don't see Paul, but he should be here shortly. Uh, we do have quorum, so we will get started now. <laughs> Wonderful. Is anyone opposed to, is there any other items we need to add to the agenda today? Okay, seeing none, um, we are approved. On to board and committee announcements and updates. Chair update with Chad. I have no chair updates. Wonderful. My chair updates are the reproductive health legislation that we supported. It did pass. Um, again, I will be absent March 31st, and that is all I have. Thank you. Oh, and happy St. Patrick's Day. On to SACAP with Mike. What does SACAP have on the docket? Um, I guess we can start off. Um, so as many of you might know, the bookstore is, um, Barnes & Nobles is moving out of the Tivoli. Um, they're no longer going to be our vendor. Um, surprise during in the near future. Um, I've heard rumors about this for a minute now, but it was confirmed um, by one of my reps yesterday. So um, that's definitely something we are going to discuss, be discussing um, once we get back in session. I canceled SACAC today. Canceled SACAC okay. um, because, um, because we didn't have anything on the docket, and then this came in my lap uh, yesterday after I canceled the meeting. So uh, this will be the first thing we go um, talk about when we get back. Um, secondly, I've been invited to a dialogue, um, a, a dialogue, um, I believe, forgot it's who, but it's going to be at CU Anschutz. Um, it's going to be uh, in relation to the search committee for the new police chief. So um, I believe on these Fridays I'll be traveling to CU Anschutz to engage in that dialogue. So I think that's all I have. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. On to Gabe with Board of Trustee. Okay. Um, so we had our board meetings, you know, to yesterday and today, eight hours, really long. Okay. Um, so I'll I'll give a more and thorough update on the Friday the 31st when we come back. So because I have to gather all my notes and put them all together because I didn't have time because we had our, our little uh, TSAC retreat thingy. Um, but I'll just say with the main big points, one, a task force has now been created. The one that Rhi and I also brought up last week, um, which is the faculty workload task force part. There's a lot of different components of it, which I'll get into next time, next meeting in two weeks. Um, but as y'all know, uh, Taylor and Paul are the new like reps on that board. They will be like the co-lead and the backup. It's up to them to choose who. Um, yeah, so that's like one of the big main points. Another one of the big main points um, is state funding and how state funding is now very low for universities, you know? And like, we're already bad at like funding schools here in Colorado already. Um, we're, we're, we're really low on that list of uh, money per student and stuff. Um, and it's gotten to the point now where universities like MSU are looking at creative ways to really come up with how to work now that the, that the state is really like lessening the amount of money and the amount of funds and the amount of impact um, that it just has an involvement within all uh, universities. Um, and basically like the state has been saying, um, if if you want more money, then raise tuition. That's kind of like the message that um, it's, it's coming from what we heard today at uh, all the different presentations. Um, but that's kind of, but that's still a lot of in talks and it's just all new information that we've gathered right now. Um, and yeah, cool. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Gabe. Uh, budget committee with Mike. Um, I have no updates from the budget committee. Thanks, Mike. On to the sustainability with Taylor and Alex. I have no update. Alex, do you? Um, 
Don't see Alex, so we will move on. Thank you. On to the Judiciary Committee with James. We did not meet, so no update. James, we cannot hear you. James, OK, no update. Wonderful. Thanks, James. On to the TSEC Public Relations Committee. Chad. Awesome. Um, so we met. Oh. Okay. Um, T. We we met on Thursday. Went over some of our, um, like some of our social media programming that we're going to be doing. We talked a little bit about food for finals. If anybody's interested in assisting with that, please let me know. Um, I put. A, I put the official statement that, that the PR committee worked on um, together. I put it in the chat, so I'd like everybody to review that and um, give everybody like, sir, everybody doesn't have their laptop, do you? I would motion to have it read. Fantastic. Love that for me. <clears throat> um, wonderful. Dear area community, as many are aware, one of our council members, Alan Williams, has engaged in language that is harmful to, to our students during an official SGT SAC meeting. This language does not align with our organization's values. We want to make it clear that we, all the student government, are in stark opposition of these ideas and will not tolerate such behavior from any member of our organization, especially harmful language towards our native indigenous community on campus. We believe in treating all individuals with respect, dignity, and fairness. SGT SAC stands for equality and the fair treatment of all. Any behavior that goes against these principles are not acceptable. We are taking the necessary steps to address this matter and ensure that our, our organization remains an inclusive space for all students and community members. We want to apologize to those who have been affected by Mr. Williams's language and assure you that we are committed to taking action to prevent such uh, such incidences from happening in the future. We are in the process of working with the Dean's office to develop future processes um, to address language of this type. It is important. For, for, ooh, it is important. Lost my spot. Hold on. It is important to us that our elected leaders be aware of the significance of their language. This is a process that is in the early development stages. In addition to working on this process internally, the council invites the student body to assist in this process of creating a more accountable student council. We take our responsibility as the representatives of the student body seriously and are committed to upholding our values and principles. As a reminder, SGT SAG holds public comment every meeting from 3 to 3.15 p.m. Every meeting. Oh, I said every meeting twice there. I will edit that. That's what we got. Any comments um, about this, Paul? Oh, thank you, Chair. I just wanted to comment that I'm I'm disappointed in this statement. I had asked to be involved in the authorship or at some point in its creation. I think it's devoid of a genuine apology or any condemnation of the uh, language that has been exhibited by Mr. Alan Williams. I want to say uh, for the record, what I believe should have been condemned. Um, to quote, having doubled down in our in the paper of record for our school, uh, does Williams believe genocide was committed against indigenous peoples? Yes, in some cases, yes, absolutely, he said. They were, and that's proven. But there's also genocide committed by Native Americans against the settlers that were coming across at that time, too. Before America was even America, and we were still Britain, and there were massacres going back and forth. That's the end of the quote. I didn't think there was going to be any discussion. I'm going to no. finish, if I could. No. Uh, I didn't think I'm going to continue gonna be speaking, as I have an equal right as another member of this council. We need to take genocide denial and historical revisionism seriously. And if we don't, the community's watching and they see that. I, 
again, wish I could have been a part of having written this statement. I could have included a quote or two and maybe made it a little stronger. Um, this amounts to me like a watered down half apology for what was said. Um, and I thought it was going to be a statement of condemnation for what had been said. Um, I'm disappointed um, and thinks it need, I think it needs to be revisited. And this council needs to revisit the way it treats genocide apology, um, historical revisionism, and the way we treat the Native and Indigenous students on our campus. Okay. We're not making any changes to that, are we? That was the PR committee, and, and that, that was it, right? So the way that I viewed this, this was under the charge of the PR committee to uh, draft and then bring to the council. Uh, where the council would then approve it or disapprove it. Um, if it needs to go through revisions, then the, it will delay this. Uh, it will delay it further. So it is up to the council to decide. But I am not making revisions during this meeting. It's just it can't happen. We will go over some too many semantics. OK, on to the next update with SAB with oh. Taylor. Oh, are you Sorry. not done? OK, apologize. Um, the other dub. So it is now. I, I suppose this is a point where we will call the question of if the, if we find this a suitable, if we want this to be our 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 what's what are we calling it? our official statement? So seconded. Okay, we will now go into a little vote. Just going to go down the list here. All right, uh, Mike. And then just so everybody is aware of the next steps on this, this this will be sent to um, the leadership on campus, as well as it will be sent to the Metropolitan um, and uh, it will be disseminated to the other uh, organizations on campus that have been affected by this rhetoric as well. OK, uh, Mike. Yes. Uh, Dan. Yes. Re. Yes. Naomi. Abstain. Stephanie. Yes. Alan. Abstain. Chad, yes. Gabe. Abstain. Abstain. James. James says yes. Alex. I abstain. Abstain. Taylor. Abstain. Thanks. And Paul. No, it's a no from me. Awesome. We. OK, it passes. Wonderful. Is there any other things with the budget committee? We have no more things with the PR committee. Sorry. <laughs> On to SAB with me and James. Um, <clears throat> We are presenting to the Board of Trustees on June 1st, which is technically after our term, but that is the way that things have turned out. Anything to add, James? Thanks, James. On to Policy Advisory Committee, Re. Just to quickly let you know that I had forwarded the email with the new Board of Trustees um, policy with naming rights that I told you all about last week. So if you can look through this and you have a vehicle to make comment, if you'd like, that'll go straight back to Megan, who's the administrator. And thank you. We haven't met again since. And back to Reed for Faculty Student Affairs Committee. We haven't met, so we're meeting again on March 28th. So I don't have a report for that this week. Super. Um, Indigenous Student Resource Committee with Naomi. Um, yeah, so I met up with NISA last week and we just were kind of going over um, some logistics and revisions for a resolution to potentially um, start up a protest slash rally, um, some advocacy work um, in order to support the Indigenous community um, with the situation going on with ICWA. And we just got their input on it and we're working on those revisions to continue forward. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, per our uh, per the resolution that founded our uh, our committee, um, it's 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 important that we 
take a, a hard look at any uh, institution, public or private, that through damage to the environment uh, harm our biosphere and indigenous sovereignty. And it came to my attention really recently that uh, a freight train has derailed on the Swinomish Reservation north of Seattle. Uh, the train was ran by Warren Buffett's BNSF, uh, it's the name of the train company, and it's leaked over 5,000 gallons of diesel into the reservation since the derailment. Um, I would encourage members of our committee and members of the council at large to look into the degree in which our university may be invested in this company. And, uh, and I would encourage that we, in, in the case that we are invested in any way, divest from, from this company. And the, uh, in, in large part because of its propensity to harm indigenous people in our country um, directly through environmental racism. And so I um, just wanted to raise that to people's attention and um, maybe look for something coming up week after next. Um, we're going to be looking into it, taking action on it. On that note as well, I highly encourage all of you to just kind of look into these things so you are knowledgeable about them. Um, take that incentive so when people ask you about the things that are going on in our country, we can you can comment on it rather than being like, oh, yeah, they, they screw over Indigenous all the time. Like, this is an opportunity for you to educate yourself and spread that awareness um, as to how much media coverage they do not give Indigenous people when it comes to taking away our land rights and, you know, polluting our reservations that they so placed us on. Thank you, Indigenous Student Resource Committee. On to open floor announcements and updates. Dan, then Paul. Yeah, so I just want to update um, the council on some of the work I've been doing on getting the university to have official position and program for people entering, re-entering society after being um, either incarcerated or impacted by the justice system. The, the uh, position has been made available and now there's um, going to be active work or more active work and more forward facing work um, that I will be seeking from the student government going forward and a resolution will be coming, but just know that the university is addressing that need and that population of people now, and there's going to be uh, programs put in place to somehow help them guide them along the way, both at the faculty staff level, as well as the student level. So that's what I have. On to Paul. Thank you. I wanted to just raise um, another kind of national issue, and I know it sometimes is like, well, national issue. We're here on campus. We're the student government. Um, we're a country, and we need to keep an eye on what happens um, in other places, especially in Washington, D.C. Senator Lindsey Graham has recently introduced a piece of uh, legislation that would encourage military intervention in Mexico um, under the auspices of you know, furthering the drug war, which we understand understand we can look back at history and be honest with ourselves has been incredibly ineffective and incredibly harmful, especially uh, the BIPOC communities and students on our campus, um, Chicano students, uh, Mexican American students. Um, and so I am going to be drafting a resolution uh, formally condemning this move, um, calling on our university to join with us in this, as well as um, you know any other voice in the state that's willing to join with us in this call. Uh, no military intervention in Mexico to uh, to disrespect the sovereignty of our neighbors to the south in that way would be uh, horrible and would have uh, consequences that would ripple onto this campus. So um, I want to raise that issue as well and would encourage people to look into it for next week. After next. Thanks, Paul. Is there any other open floor announcements? Go on once, go on twice, and on to the advisor updates. Uh, Dr. Brown and I just want to say thank you to those who attended the retreat today. We hope that it took uh, you all took some, something with you to to start to think about, to start to reflect on your own personal, you know, values and belief systems when coming to work and just living your day to day lives. Um, major updates: we don't really have too much in terms of elections. I am working with the elections team and making sure that we get our candidates certified. We've had a uh, a low number this week, but it was the first official week that everything was open. Um, and yeah, we're just pushing through for those who are not rerunning. Please, please, please continue to advocate, continue to push and suggest other folks to run for student government. Um, I would love to see, you know, a more representation of the campus as we move forward. Um, and then the second thing is um, knowing whoever will be on campus, I will be on campus next week. 
Um, if anyone is looking to talk into the whole lift situation, they have now emailed me asking for an update to see what's going on. Um, I don't want this to be another situation where, you know, we ask questions and then it falls flat. So if anyone is interested and has capacity and not overdoing themselves, let's let's talk about it. It's the the lift uh, program we were interested in doing in, in response to John's bike request. Um, since we can't purchase one off bikes for one student, we're trying to do a, a larger thing. I think you were here. Um, yeah, I think that's really it. Questions? Mike? Um, take it that I work in CMEI and I'll be there next week as well. Schedule a meeting. I'll take this on. Naomi? Yeah, I just want to ask real quick. Um, so if we're graduating in the fall, can we still run or does it we have to be here actively for a year? Yeah, it's be here for the full okay, academic awesome. year. And but if we take like you can be on committees and you can still come and support committees. Okay. You just can't be chair of the committee or officially be on board. Board, on as a counselor. And if we took like and we it can be at least one credit hour we're considered like in school or does it have to be full time? To be on a committee? No, to be on T set. We're running again, just one credit hour per semester what? for next year. Cool, cool, cool. Thank you. For both semesters. Anything else? Is Dr. Barone here? She's right there. Oh, okay. hey. <laughs> you have your, it's your update time. Okay. Um, what do I need to say? I just. Thank you to everyone today who uh, took the time um, to engage with one another in community. I think that it was important, it needed, and um, looking forward to spring break next week and um, hoping you all take some time to process and think about what you need as a team um, to continue to move forward um, and some distance, which is also good. Um, in terms of elections and i think did armando already talk about this elections and just what we're okay i'll i'll let armando talk about the elections and those pieces um and i look forward to meeting with the native indigenous um, student committee um desiree richards has asked me if i could have um, a meeting with the committee and desiree to talk through what um ways she's engaging and um, there's the powwow is this weekend, I believe. And we have um, bought some tickets and they're doing that and facilitating that um, through our office. So excited for that, but um, wanna work in collaboration with that committee so that we can make sure that we're being um, as effective and collaborative as possible to make sure that we're meeting our students' needs. So um, we have set a meeting for after spring break and yeah, I think those are those are the updates I can think of at the top of my head. Thank you. Um, one of clarification, I just want to let everyone know she means the Denver March powwow is going on, yeah. not the tri institutional powwow. That one's going to be May 6th. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks. On to the elections updates, Chad and Jody. Sweet. Um, so, as Ramon said, we've been getting some Canada applications in. Um, the, uh, we had an ice cream social last, was it this week? Uh, it was Wednesday. Yeah, it was this week. Um, anyway, it went off um, pretty, it went off really good. Uh, we had a survey out there in which 99 um, uh, people responded. And I think they were a majority MSU students for sure. I think we had a couple CU Denver, but but still good uh, student engagement. Additionally, we had um, eight views uh, of the Canada applications just during the ice cream social event. Um, so it was a success. I'd like to thank uh, Chad, Jody and uh, Kenny and also anyone else who uh, helped out the event that I was unaware of um, as they covered my ass since I had to leave early. Um, anyway, uh, moving on uh, the application due dates uh, after some deliberation have been moved to April 3rd. Uh, this will not affect when you can start campaigning if you're uh, going to run, which will be March 29th. Uh, well, March 29th is when we start opening up uh, the uh, orientations uh, for uh, campaigns. It's just going to be real simple. Be like, this is what libel and slander is. Here's what you're allowed to do and what you're not. Real easy. But 
just uh, in, in the application pack, if you take a look, uh, you've got to attend uh, the orientation before you can start campaigning. And orientations open up on March 29th. Um, otherwise, uh, let's see. Uh, events coming up on April 4th and 5th are going to be two uh, uh, events centered around promoting elections and also give uh, space for the candidates to kind of campaign and meet voters more personally. So if you are interested in running, I highly recommend you clear out uh, some time in your schedule on the 4th and the 5th to attend those. Uh, more information will uh, be sent to you after you turn in your applications and I'll let you know what those things are, when they are, what's coming up. Um, and how to get involved with that stuff, along with uh, ways to promote yourself with the Metropolitan um, and other and the uh, elections website. Um, then lastly, after spring break, uh, we're going to start tabling outside to promote elections. Uh, so since there's only two of us, um, if anyone wants to help out and assist, uh, especially if you're not running again, it would be much appreciated. And, uh, you know, we can... Uh, we're hoping to get some uh, food items, snacks and drinks as well, and swag to pass out to promote. Um, otherwise, I can take any questions if anyone has any at this time, and that's it for updates. Alex? So I don't attend, I, I, don't, <clears throat> I don't intend to be uh, running, so if you'll send me an email for the tabling event, I can help. Will do, thank you. Paul? Mine's just a quick question, and um, if, if you have it, do you know what time you're thinking about having those events on Tuesday and Wednesday, April 4th and 5th? Um, so you'll get all that information and specifics in the email, um, but off the top of my head, on the 4th is uh, 3.30, and on the 5th is 9 a.m. Thank you. Oh, and uh, the 4th is going to be 3.20 a, and the 5th is going to be the uh, Turn Hall Garage Lounge. The Tivoli Garage Lounge, yeah. Okay, seeing no other anything else, um, we are going to go into our public comment, which is usually 3 p.m. to 3.15, but today we will do 2.58 to 3.15. Okay, are there any members of the public? Make yourself known. Type in the chat. Raise your hand. Wonderful. We have Kyla. Yeah. Um, so uh, I will start with saying that the comment that you were planning on releasing over the uh, comments made by the representative on y'all's council, um, I'm going to just go ahead and say that that's not enough. Um, Paul is correct. Um, and just based on Paul's uh, rhetoric. I would ask that he be on the next, you know, the next time y'all y'all want to release a statement about this because he seems to be the only one who's actively uh, using the right language. Um, I will say that I'm really disappointed in this group. Um, I am a student, and I am I have been harmed, um, and I know I'm not the only one. Um, you guys have boiled this down to a speech issue and it's not, um, it's very harmful, um, to us and to our everyday lives. And I'll tell you myself, I no longer feel comfortable and safe on this campus. Um, and I want you guys, I want you all to think about that when you are talking about your reelections. I want you to think about that when you are thinking of, of, if you're a good enough candidate to represent the students on this campus, and if you are making us feel safe and welcomed here, uh, think about that when you're running next time. And think about that when you go forward, because what's happening now is not good. And what's happening to us with this, with this campus, it's, it's dangerous to us, and no one seems to be giving it the credit that it deserves. And I want y'all to think about that. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Um, is there any other members of the public that would like to, to use this time? It's a different hand. I just want to say that um, 
William's comment about how um, indigenous people fought back is um, pretty lame. Like, of course, people would fight back if they were being attacked. And I don't think it's justifying for what he said in any way whatsoever. Thank you. Are there any other comments from the public? Being none, um, we will get back to our business, but if anyone else joins before 3.15, they will have the floor for two minutes. Thank you. On to the new business, which is a motion for $300 for drinking for a trike institutional carnival. Sorry, so this is on to my motion. So um, this is this would be super quick and easy. Um, <clears throat> so as part of the SACAB event that we approved of last week, um, uh, one thing kind of that was kind of collectively agreed on between the SACAB reps is that um, each institution would bring an offering for like a food per se um, to this event. So I know that CU Denver is bringing popcorn and I know CCT is bringing their cotton candy machine. Um, so I just wanted to make a motion to allocate $200 so we can get Agua Fresca for the event because right now there's no drinks at the event. Um, SACAB is providing pizza for the main course as well. Um, so uh, I just want to motion that 200 bucks be allocated and um, anything that you use go straight back to the budget committee for Agua Fresca for the drinks for the event next week. We have a motion on the floor that has been seconded and I did not hear it. So yes, Paul seconded it. I apologize. Can you can you remind me what the motion was? So the motion is to allocate 200 bucks for drinks for the Trinstitutional Carnival that will be happening on Wednesday. 300, did I say 300? 300, my apologies. Okay. <laughs> Let me just reset. Cool. So, yeah. Um, so said. not for drinking, but for drinks. Agua Fresca, yes. So just refreshment. <laughs> Got it. Okay, so we have a motion that has been seconded. We will go into discussion. Uh, we can start with opposition to the motion. Anybody? All right. And then any other comments? So just to catch everybody up to speed, there's a motion to uh, allocate $300 for this uh, uh, tri-institution uh, SACAB event so that we can uh, provide refreshments. Cool. Paul, go ahead. Uh, the Agua Fresco was a hit at the ice cream event, and I think it would be a mistake to not vote for this motion because um, it'll be hit at this event too, I'd imagine. So good job, Mike, on the suggestion. Uh, you have my full support. Super. Any other comments from anybody? Cool. Then we will call the question. Um, Mike. Yes. Dan. Yes. Bree. Yes. Naomi. Yeah. Stephanie. Stephanie says yes. Alan. Um, yes. Chad, yes. Gabe. Yes. James. James says yes. Alex. Aye. Taylor. Yes. And Paul. Yes. Wonderful. Passes unanimously. Okay, wonderful. Um, on to two other things. I want to give the floor to Dr. Brown. She has another thing that she forgot to mention. Then we're going to go right back to Paul. Sorry, everyone. I got caught off guard when I moved in, but this is important um, to talk about here in this space. Um, many of you may or may not be aware that we lost a very valued um, leader and member in our community, Alfonso Porter, who was the Associate Director for the Center for Multicultural Engagement and Inclusion and oversaw Met Media, all of our student publications, newspaper, radio, um, Met TV, podcasting, arts and literary Met magazine, The Metrosphere, um, passed away last weekend unexpectedly. And that has been a very traumatic event um, for Lots of folks, including students, staff, faculty, who've been deeply impacted by that loss. I know we often have folks from Met Media joining us in the space, and I think I see some here as well. And so I just really want to acknowledge um, 
not only the loss, but the loss to our community and the greater Denver community. Alfonso was a highly regarded and respected leader within the Black community and the Black journalist community. Um, and there have been articles and a lot of things that are, are being written about him right now and his legacy. And so I am working with Dr. Nguyen um, and Dr. Jennings, the chair of the journalism department, as well as um, Human Resources and um, Alfonso's family. And we are working on putting together um, a celebration of his life. And there will be more information about that as um, we are able to share those details. But I did want to not to, sh to shift the tone, but I do think I need to say that here in the space because it, it's a big lot and a big deal. And I know a lot of folks are grieving. And so if you know of students um, who are, are really struggling or triggered by um, the current situation, please file care reports. Um, or um, always feel free to reach out to the Counseling Center. They are well aware of the situation and, and came in and did some um, support for the Met Media team and, and for Alfonso's classes. He taught two classes as well in the journalism department. So just wanted to share that in the space and want you all to know that there are resources available. We're also offering resources for staff and faculty who've been impacted as well. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Barone. I want to offer my sincerest condolences to the people in this room who were really impacted by Alfonso. And please, um, anyone who, if there's anything the student government can do, please let us know. Um, would anyone else like to speak on this? Okay. Um, moving on, uh, Paul. Thank you, Taylor. Um, I had intended to draft this up in a more formal form, but I tell you, the week got away from me. It's just been one of the busier weeks of my life, um, but good busy. So um, I'll say uh, I intend to do what I had talked about last week, wherein uh, we want to meet the uh, the budget deficit for the housing event. We're talking about $200. And so um, I'd like to make a motion that we increase the original 4,000 we were going to uh, invest into the housing project to $4,200. That way we can meet any gaps for providing food, making sure everybody that goes is fed, making sure the event goes smoothly. And so that's my motion. Motion to raise it by 200 bucks. A second. Okay, wonderful. We will go into the voting now. Does anybody have any discussion that they would like to add to this before we go to call the question? Okay, calling the question. Mike. Yes. Dan. Yes. Three. Naomi. Yes. Stephanie. Yes. Alan. Yes. Chad. Yes. Gabe. Yes. James. James. Yes. Alex. Hey. Taylor. Aye. And Paul. Aye. Wonderful. Passes unanimously. All right. Well, that concludes all of our new items of business. So we will move to closing. Thank you all for coming in. Thank you. And oh, is, can this be an email, Chad? Find a microphone. Um, sorry, uh, am I good to go? Um, so, uh, so unfortunately, Dr. Brown uh, reminded me that I talked with Adrian, who is a part of Met Media, and um, uh, we were still going through with the interviews uh, on the 28th. Um, so I highly advise, I would highly encourage any TSAC members to come in and give their accounts as to what student government has been. Um, but email me uh, if you want to participate, and that will be on the 28th of March. Uh, if once I get RSVPs in, I will start coming up with a schedule. OK, thank you. Thank you for that verbal email, Chad. All right, closing. Y'all have an excellent spring break. Thank you all much for your advocacy. Have a great one.
Thanks.